Hey everybody, Radaman here. Thanks for tuning in to Kerbal Space Program Operation Dunas Stage 3. So, last two episodes, we circularized an orbit around Kerbin. Then we did a transfer window to Kerbal Space, uh, well, to Duna. And now we're trying to get home. Now, the issue we have here is, uh, how to put it simply, um, we are totally out of phase for a return trip. Uh, so if I, as you can see here, blast uh, towards, well, I'm really blasting the wrong way, um, towards Kerbin, um, the transfer windows, like I was trying to explain last episode, uh, we are really not anywhere near a transfer window and the proof here is uh like this if i actually do the ejection phase correctly the ejection phase here would be when the ship is about here is when you want to do your ejection burn from and as you can see here we don't intercept kerbin not even a little bit if i select it as a target as you can see uh nothing no near passes or anything uh one thing we could do here is although crazy to add orbits uh but honestly the the fastest way to do this is just to go back to kerbal space center this of course was a tip by one of you uh saying that if you are not in the right elevation meaning that i'm not uh, 600 kilometers above Kerbin, or above really any planet, what's or or moon or whatever. Um, if you don't want to go into a higher parking orbit, um, you can just warp at the tracking station, and that was Jason Lee's suggestion. So let's go and do that. So the correct phase for a transfer for RHD-16, my Duna mission, is that Duna needs to be about 75 degrees in front of Kerbin. Right now it's maybe about 90 behind. And if we accelerate time here, as you can see, the craft is spinning around Duna ridiculously. Uh, but the phases are changing. And soon, Duna will be about 75 degrees ahead all I got to do is wait so as you can see here the missions to take you to other planets Duna Drez Moho Eve etc are um, very time intensive uh, so you can plan other excursions while you do it and that's something I could have been doing and what I mean by that is while this Duna mission was happening, and while I was waiting for this multi-year transfer window, I could have just been um, doing missions to Moho or Eve. Now, because I'm chasing the milestone missions, I'm trying to focus solely on that milestone. And once I hammer out enough milestones, I can start having more fun uh, with the missions. Now, I did receive one other tip from you uh, all. I actually continually receive this tip, which is to uh, right-click on the Periaps or Apple Apps markers to lock the numbers. That way, I don't have to chase them with the cursor. And that makes a whole lot of sense. All right, we're getting pretty close to the transfer window here. Not perfect, but I would like to take a look to see how close I am. Just to know that I don't overwarp or underwarp or whatever. And let's, I don't know how this craft has sun, to be honest. So we also, in the process, did a whole lot of um, science processing stuff. Alright, so the ejection here will look like... Uh, it's about 121 degrees, but basically here. Add a maneuver and blast and blast and blast now if you remember i was um ooh, that doesn't look right i was um well hmm, how to put this i calculated that i could repack my shoots and then forgot of course 
uh, that I'm not an engineer. So once we get to Kerbin, uh, the issue is, of course, that uh, I don't really have parachutes to re-enter the atmosphere. So I could either help to repack it. Um, and by that, I mean send up an engineer on a quick little mission to pack my chutes back up. Or uh, try to do some engine landing. Alright, so here is the uh, closest approach. Uh, and as you can see, it is not right. It's it's incorrect. Uh, let's go back to the tracking station. I could raise my parking orbit to do this not from tracking. But this is fine. I just need to keep an eye on Duna and Kerbin. And their relations to one another. All right, let's see if that will do. Man, I really need to invest in a protractor. There is, of course, mods that do this for me, but um, and also you're probably not going to physically be able to see me use a protractor. Uh, but uh, yeah, that would be nice if I had a said protractor. All right, let's go for the transfer here. See if this is a little bit more accurate. And I do have a lot of fuel on this craft, which will allow me some wiggle room. If it isn't perfect. And of course, this is closer to the approach, but not quite there. But my name is basically Captain Trial and Error. So here we go. Yet another time. And I'll, I'll tell you, I'll show you how to sort of read the approaches to see um, if you're over or under shooting or whatever. All right, so here's the maneuver again. Zoom all the way out so we can see. Oh, and look at that. That looks so much nicer. So all I need here is probably a little bit of tweaking or to add a few orbits to it. So if I, well, let's do it again. Uh, so the, oh, there it is, a periapsid marker. Uh, let's, in fact, I will focus on Kerbin. All right, there's my periapsid marker. Uh, my maneuver is going to cost me about 700 delta V. And I can use my transfer to get this periaps much closer. In fact, I would ideally bring this into very low orbit. And that way I can have an engineer repack. Oh, look at that, it's beautiful, it's equatorial. And that one has me colliding with the moon. Uh, all right, there we go. That is my transfer burn, 695 Delta V. And I'm going to warp to next maneuver. Now let's go hit Tilde. I don't know what your keybinds might be, but Tilde has me focus back on my craft. And I just have to wait for the transfer burn. Looks like I've been racking in a whole lot of science from my deployables that I deployed on Duna. In the meantime, I had about one hundred something like 180 160 some sort of science around there and uh, as you can see here I have quite a bit more when I land it's gonna be ridiculous oh actually you know what's crazy um my Duna orbit here wait what it just showed me that I was below 50 but my periaps is 54. I don't know what's going on. I was going to say that it's crazy that all this time I've been orbiting, I've been in Duna atmosphere, but I really shouldn't have been. Um, that was just like uh, game bugginess, I guess. I don't know. Doesn't matter. I'm leaving Duna. Goodbye, Duna. Now, there's probably a lot more science I could have gamed out of my Duna visit. Um, using science storage contain vessels and 
getting EVA reports from every possible elevation. It's just not how I particularly like to play. It would be more completionist, of course, but um, it's damn boring sometimes. Alright, so let's find the maneuver node. We need to start burning in 43 seconds. Looks like I'm not staging this stage off, which is good. I'm sort of curious if this Poodle liquid engine is going to have enough thrust for a Kerbin re-entry. I guess time will tell. And I'm trying to keep the start burn at dash. It's basically what it is. If it goes over or under, I can change my thrust and keep that dead on. And I'm sure that I'll have some fine-tuned adjustments to make because I doubt that I'm going to be in a nice hitting Kerbin's atmosphere orbit on first try. That's just not how first tries work. Not for me, at least. All right, so uh, let's focus on Kerbin. Oh, you know what? That's not that bad. That is not that bad. For first try. Alright, so back to my craft. Uh, let's queue up a maneuver that we'll do in 20 minutes. Switch back to Kerbin and then modify this maneuver to bring us much closer to Kerbin. So periaps of 280 sounds good to me, man. Sounds good to me. All right, so let's go warp to next maneuver. This is only a uh, eight delta V maneuver. Really nothing I can't afford there, considering I have still thousands of fuel left. Now this craft wasn't designed with heat shields. Um, probably should have been, but wasn't designed with heat shields and I used up the uh, parachutes that were supposed to be um, reserved for my beautiful uh, reascension or re-entry into Kerbin, and as a result, uh, there's going to be a little bit of problems getting back there. All right, let's take a look. That is uh, that is perfect. All right, let's go ahead and warp. Uh, just manual warping is fine because it's gonna it's gonna be a long transfer here where's my ship All right. let's go ahead and say warp to this point which is 252 days in the future so here's RHD 16 and RHD 16 is going out this way and Kerbin is going out this way and we will meet hypothetically we will meet so I just escaped the gravitational influence of Duna for the first time and my deployed science data can no longer has a connection from home basically my ship had been acting as a booster as a antenna booster and the ship can boost no longer it's too far from Duna if I want deployed science on Duna to be able to reach home, I would have needed to leave a satellite in Duna's uh, sphere of influence or something like that. Um, and I I have no such satellite for sure. Uh, I didn't leave it there, so. Alright. Here we are. We are in beautiful Kerbin orbit. I'm just going to circularize. And then decide how much fuel I have left, whether I should land or not. Alright, let's go ahead warp to next maneuver. Hello ship, you've traveled far. Let's hope you haven't picked up any Martian microorganisms. Or Dunin microorganisms, I should say. Uh, so Delta V... We're total total delta V we have is about four. Oh yeah, I have enough to land. All right, let's go ahead and retract those solar power panels. 
I'm still going to, oh, let's go change my burn. I'm going to be burning at like 90%, not 10%. I guess my lights, oh no, my lights were off. They kind of looked like they were glowing. So circularizing will allow me to more accurately land at Kerbal Space Center. Um, I'm very bad at arrow breaking nodes and arrow break pr predictions. And before I actually decide that I'm landing on Kerbin, I need to see about my uh, thrust to weight ratio. So uh, my current thrust to weight ratio is enough with the next phase it's still above one okay yeah i'm good i'm good uh you know what i'm gonna do let's do a retrograde burn and bring my orbit bring my um orbit even even closer to kerbin low 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 orbit and that way i can with very little effort arrow immediately go to arrow breaking if i want Yeah, it's about 100k. We will circularize once again. Here we go. 98 and something close to 100. I'm just doing this so that I can very accurately land near Kerbal Space Center for the beautiful, beautiful uh, ship refunds because this ship is full. And I mean F U L L of science, expensive science objects, uh, which means. Um, if I can land close, I get money back. Not that I really need it. I have millions now, uh, but that doesn't mean I shouldn't be attempting to be economical. Okay, there we go. Uh, I could start my descent now, but I'd rather do it in the sun. I'd rather do it in daytime and have a, uh, a daytime celebration, so let's go ahead and accelerate time. I mean, this mission's been four years in the making. What's one more day, right? Or at least that's the hope. Alright, so here I am. Uh, you know what? This is going to take too long. Uh, let's go into the tracking station and uh, uh, warp to next morning. Yeah, I think it will be a little bit faster. All right, time warp next morning. Look at all those interconnected stuff. All right, warp to next morning is done. And now I'm probably going to already be too far past curb and space. No, no, actually, it's good. All right, so let's do a little periaps burn. I'm not going to wait for my refueling, although I should. What are my screen messages? Oh, yeah, we're doing a close pass of Duna. So I guess what happened here is my solar observation and Duna were close enough to one another that it could piggyback. And uh, as a result... Well, it did piggyback. Uh, what's going on here? This is... Goodbye. We don't need them anymore. And, um... It got some of that Duna Science home. Thank you, Solar Observation. Alright, so let's queue up what my speed versus the surface is. So I have about... Let's call it 1800 Delta V that I need to cut. I have got, uh... 3k on my ship. So I have enough, even if Kerbin didn't have an atmosphere, to land um, safely, happily on Kerbin. Which is good. I don't have, um... I really don't want to stage my engines off, because of course I don't have parachutes. So I gotta be careful about that. But what I, why I'm burning, if you're curious, is I also don't want to burn up in Kerbin atmosphere. That would also be a tragic ending to this beautiful, beautiful flight. So I'm going to try to cut most of my horizontal velocity. 
Kerbal Space Center is right down there. That's where I want to be. Actually. Let's burn a little bit this way. I'm burning that way because it looked like, uh... It looked like, uh... Yep. That was a little off-center there. There we go. Now my, my thrust-to-weight ratio... Oh, you know what? I still have drogue shoots. So why not? Why not use some drogues? Hello, Kerbal Space Center. It is beautiful to see you. So I'm just accelerating time. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to set my drogue shoots up to deploy at higher altitudes to see about how much they can cut my speed. I should not take a lot of heat for this Atmo reentry. As you can see, I'm landing pretty close. The drogue shoots aren't going to be able to slow me down enough, but it did a whole lot. There we go. My drogues are getting me down to 80, 70 ish. Oh man, look at this re entry. Get a full view of Kerbal Space Center. Gonna be treated like a god while I land back from Duna. Something humans haven't done, but say they will do. And I can basically just engine brake Moy down. Oh, Kerbin and your gravity. This would have been a lot easier if I didn't burn up my um, parachutes. The other problem is I'm coming in a little fast, so my engine phase is going to go plap here. But honestly, now I'm I'm just a big pillar. Cool. All right. Well, the engine's broke, but uh, I succeeded. Uh, contract explore Duna done. That's not a lot of rewards there, dude. Oh, there we are. There we are. World first milestones. Okay. Well, here is the big reveal how much science I'm going to get for this all. Even though I broke the engines at the like the last uh, second, I'm going to call this a success. We gained 1,871.7 science. Woo-wee. That is a lot of science. That's why I... I knew I could game the system and get a little bit more. I knew I could have made a cheaper ship. Uh, we got refunded uh, 90, almost 98% value. We refunded 75k. That's a drop in the bucket considering I have 3.4 mil, however. And then Jeb leveled up. He's pilot level 3. Gained a whole lot of experience. I gained some reputation. Um, all right. Uh, taking a look at my contracts here. What is my next milestone? It's probably... I have a bunch of like, go back to Duna. We liked Duna. Uh, I have an Explore Duna. Alright, I see how this is. I've done some Duna and then they're like, do more Duna. Okay, so we're going to plant another flag on Duna. We're going to Explore Duna. Um... I am going to do this mission, which is to put an orbital station around Duna, and that way it's something for me to rendezvous. Um, I just wanted to read the details, so the details, I know the details aren't absurd, and they don't seem to be absurd, they seem to be pretty reasonable. So here's my active ones. So this is, what, five Kerbals, research lab, which is two Kerbals already, so three in the MKV lander, and then station in... Uh, in Orbit of Duna, blah, 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 science, antennas. Yes, okay, I can do that all. Now, another big thing is what's the transfer window, right? Because now we know, well, I always knew, but now I have um, told you all that uh, you really can't go to Duna outside transfer windows. Duna needs to be about 45 degrees ahead of Kerbin. It is behind Kerbin. 
Uh, and this is the same sort of really crummy transfer window we had before, where it's going to take years to be aligned. Um, well, there's nothing really to... Uh, I could either wait it out or go anyway. But in the meantime, we have a whole lot of science to do. So, there is some better science acquisition um, objects to grab here. So this is... These things here convert um, ore minerals that you mine for to fuel, which is very cool. This is a mining uh, arm. This is these convert them. Uh, bigger arm, uh, holding tanks for ore, a, lar a smaller holder tank. This is a uh, gravioli detector. It's kind of like a neutrino detector, I guess. Um, what do you do? You. are sort of a anti-weather analyzer. So, it requires that it does not have an atmosphere. Okay. And then a big scanning arm. All right. I want that. And then we have experimental science here. Uh, this is narrowband scanners. That will help you to scan um, surface or um, concentrations, I guess. And then a large holding tank. I don't know, know if I need that yet. Ion propulsion is mostly for um, little satellites and stuff. That would be really cool to get to move towards. Uh, what else are we missing here? Big relay antennas, uh, radio isotope thermal electric generators, and big battery packs. I'm just trying to make sure that I don't spend up my science and then have buyer's remorse so right now i'm leaning towards go for iron propulsion but uh but i haven't fully decided that yet i think i also need high performance fuel systems i need big tanks right um these girders flare airlock is pretty cool though gotta say it's pretty cool uh what else am i missing here these are for like space stations i haven't had a lot of good space station um missions. Here's some clampatrons. This is more for aviation. Uh, what do I have? I have 15... Okay, yeah, I, I have a lot left. Advanced motors, if I want big old motors and rotors. Alright, so yeah, I've decided... Let's get probe tech. Let's get ion propulsion. And I have two... I've, I have either enough for another 550 tech. Or two of these 300 techs so the of the 550 techs what would I do I would get maybe the nicest probe core it can even do biome and terrain scan modes well wow. it can support oh target tracking and everything no kidding um Maybe, maybe, maybe. But I think because I am uh, I'm building a space station, I really ought to get space station tech. So there we go. Uh, I do not have buyer's remorse. Cool. Uh, so our next mission is a space station. So this is one that I do not intend will ever land on Duna. It's going to sit there. Uh, does... It has to support at least five Kerbals, um, Research Lab, Orbit Aduna. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pilot in it, and then the ship that's going to be my next Duna landing ship will dock with this thing, and uh, yeah, and then and then take that pilot from the space station and bring them home. So this is my space station. So this would be RHD 17. And... Oh, I see. I haven't actually used one of these before. That's, um, I like that. Let's, let's use that. Say nothing about Viagra, but, um... Okay, so, what do we need on this thing? I don't plan on super over-engineering it. It does need a mobile lab, though. 
and I'm just going to make sure that uh, that the mobile lab plus the pod ha meets the requirement of five. Sometimes the game can be fussy. It does. All right, so antenna, docking port, generate power. Cool. Open airlock. That's going to be a little bit easier to um, to dock with because it will be able to separate itself out from the rest of the craft. Um, all right. So if we want, I'm probably not going to put it up there. If we want um, really, really, really good relay, like to be able to convert this into a giant powerful antenna, uh, this is what we need to do. We need to put that bad boy right there. Um, what I think I'm gonna do actually is, let's see. Truss structure on, interstage nodes on. Okay, so I'm gonna put my satellite there or my um, antenna and then the docking airlock there how this functionally works I have no idea um, build fairing come on I'm clicking like a madman All right, <laughs> it's so stupid looking. All right, so that has an antenna. It cannot generate power yet. Um, I'll just put some, I'll respect the windows uh, and put some solar arrays here. Respecting the windows meaning not blocking my beautiful, beautiful view. So there we go. And these will extend out like that. Looks pretty neat. Uh, what else does this bad boy need? Antenna, yes. Docking port, yes. Generate power, yes. Five Kerbals, yes. Research lab, yes. In the orbit of Duna. That is the only big thing there. The orbit of Duna. Um, Alright, so I have to decide, is there other things I want to put on this thing? Not really, personally. I could um, put uh, survey scanners, so I could survey for resources. Um, but because it's, n I'm not planning on putting this thing into, um, I'm not planning on putting this thing into a uh, polar orbit. Uh, it doesn't really make that much sense that I have scanning. So the reason I say polar orbit, if you can imagine, uh, I'm really going to have to demonstrate this a different way. So let me go to the tracking station. just so that I can show you why a scanning survey would need to be in your polar orbit. So if you can imagine that I had a scanner, uh, let's turn off all this jazz. Actually, let's just, yeah, show, hide the comm network. Let's say I put a scanner into the equatorial orbit of Kerbin. It would only really be able to scan a very narrow band of the equator it would do that often, it would do that every revolution, it would go over the same point every time. Now if I had the orbit be somewhat of an elliptical, or not an elliptical, but um, at an angle, let's say a 45 degree angle, what it would be able to do is scan pretty much everything between this, the latitudes that are not polar, so between this and this, it would be able to scan all of that, because what would happen is while Kerbin was rotating, it would hit different points. So like on the first pass, it might hit here, then here, then here, then here. So it would eventually scan most of the planet. But of course, it wouldn't have scanned the poles. The only way to scan a pole is to have it into polar orbit. So the best way, I would say, to have a scanner set up, because if you set it up on 90 degree exactly polar orbit, you have the same problem that you had. Well, you sort of have the same problem that you had with the equator. It would actually eventually, like I'm talking like maybe a year or two scan every bit of part of the planet because as the planet spins on its axis you're scanning a new part but it's not covering a whole lot of ground uh, whereas if you have like an 87 percent 
polar orbit, you'll miss like a teeny little dot at the top of the poles, but you'll have most of the planet scanned pretty quickly. Um, that is why you would want a survey scanner in polar orbit or near polar orbit, and that's absolutely not what I want to set up for a, uh, a space station. I could, uh, and maybe I should. Now I'm having a little bit of a builder's remorse. Yeah, maybe I will set this up as a ore scanner. I really hadn't thought of that. But if, alright, let's say I want it as an ore scanner. Let's go ahead and redesign the wheel a bit. So, um, what we would need is a good antenna and the survey scanner. Is that the best survey scanner I have? I do believe it is. Um, this gets the information back home. This gets the information. Um, then let's see. I would want a few other things on here. So th this is payload, more or less. Um, Alright, I think what I'll do is put it as payload here. Interstage nodes on. And try to set this up as payload down here. This scanner could operate like that. I mean, it's weird, because obviously you're scanning the butt back of the interstaged payload. Um, alternatively, uh, alternatively, I could just have the antenna up here under a payload and have this thing down there. But then comes the whole, where do you put, where do you dock? Um, I could probably figure that out. Okay, yeah, I'll figure that out. I'll, I'll, I'll make do. Alright. Let's go ahead and stick this on. Build a fairing. Come on. Come on. Sometimes the fairings are... Uh... Okay, I don't want it that wide. And as you can see, depending on the size of my fairing and all that, the weight of this changes. So you don't get free mass with no weight. Oh, you're driving me crazy. You know what? Fine. You know what? You're going to be that annoying. Uh, you don't get a fairing. You get to be damaged from the atmosphere of Kerbin. How's that make you feel now? You've pissed me off, and now I'm going to damage you on purpose. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. All right, this is a very dumb space center station thing design, uh, but it didn't need to didn't need to look nice. Uh, I'm okay with the way it looks. Uh, and then I'm just about out of time, so what I'm going to do for next episode is to finish off this design and get it back ready to go. A space station, an orbital space station around Duna, um, and I'll be able to. Do the Explore Duna check marks and the uh, Orbital Space Station, and also be able to scan it for ores, which will unlock some opportunities to do mining missions on Duna if I uh, end up with contracts with that. So before I log off, let's see. What else can I do in the meantime? Uh, yeah, I can, I can think... While I wait for the Duna transfer window, I can build out the craft, and while I wait for the transfer window, I can do some other missions in the meantime, I suppose. Uh, if you have any tips, tricks, feedback for me, drop me a line. If you have any other suggestions, uh, especially mods and things like that, that I could add in once I'm done chasing all these milestones, let me hear it. I hope you have enjoyed these episodes, and I'll catch you all later. Thanks for watching, everybody. Adios.